I'll give you one story without mentioning the names of these members of parliament. Now, somewhere in Western Kenya, there was a race for MP. And uh, this particular area, it's a stronghold of Ford Kenya. So these guys campaigned and campaigned and there was an ODM candidate. A candidate who never showed up for any campaigns, never even came to shake people's hands. He only showed up in the last two weeks. The campaigns have been going on. I'm talking about 2017, not 2022. He showed up in the last two weeks with a helicopter. He went to this ground. A helicopter has never been seen there before. He landed there. Everyone rushed to come see the helicopter. He gave them handouts, 500 each. The other guys were giving out 150. He gave them 500. So the people left there saying, who is this fellow? So they sang his name and he became popular. He left there, went to another area, three different regions, and he won that election. A two-week campaign with excessive money, he defeated everyone else. Many of you who visit this platform on a daily, you get to understand the happenings of the country through various analysis. Now, clearly, you do have an interest in politics. But if you go out and look for the resource as to how you yourself can become a politician in this very country, I guarantee you, you will almost always come up short. Now, I am going to do this mini-series. It's a series whereby I'll inform you in regards to every single aspect to running a successful campaign. Even if you have never vied before, after watching and completing this series, you'll understand the ins and the outs of a political campaign, straight from security, fundraising, crafting your message, and outwitting your opponents. It'll be all in one series and it's going to be free of charge. No one is charging you for this. This is always going to be in the public domain. I don't intend to pull down these videos or to charge a fee for it. Now, the first and the most important segment, before you even think of vying for any office, is finances. The first task of any man or woman, boy or girl, who has the ambitions of becoming a politician one day, is to build assets. In politics, money is like mother's milk. You cannot do without it. You might find one odd politician here and there who pulled through with nothing, like the MP of Igembe South, but those are one-off instances. It is very hard to pull off. You are better off acquiring the assets, acquiring the finances, and putting yourself in a better position to win the election. So if you have 20,000 in your pockets, and it is your dream to become a politician, maybe even an MCA, do not take that 20,000 and go pay school fees for somebody thinking that that act will win you an election four years later. It will not. You are better off taking that 20, go start a small business, build up your finances, go expand to another territory and another territory. Build yourself first so that you can do greater acts of kindness in the society, the same way Mike Sonko has been doing. I recently did a video of the top five heartwarming moments of Mike Sonko whereby he's donating half a million here, he's doing this and that. You cannot compete with such people if you have not acquired the wealth. So your biggest target, your biggest goal today is to raise the money. Every single politician that you know today in this country has assets somewhere, but they will never tell you. Some of you eat at their restaurants. Some of you play golf at their country clubs, but you do not know that they are the owners. All of them have assets. You saw the vetting of the cabinet secretaries by the National Assembly, they were being told to state their net worth. Everyone was worth millions. People like Mudavadi were worth billions. So clearly you can see a pattern there. Money is key. And if you don't have the required funds, it is very likely you will drop out of the race very early or your campaign will perform very poorly because money does a number of things and I'd like to take you through those things. Number one, it will pay your staff. A paid staff is a motivated staff member. And they will do what is required and they will not go leaking your information to other campaigns in order to make money from outside. For instance, if you are running a campaign, you need drivers. It is not every day that you will visit certain areas in your jurisdiction. There are days when that branded vehicle with loudspeakers saying Mwangi or so-and-so for MCA or MP or governor, that vehicle will just be moving around with the driver as the speaker is saying your name. Vote for so-and-so, vote for so-and-so, so that the people can have your name at the back of their minds. So money plays a very important role. And if you don't pay that same driver, he will park that vehicle next to a restaurant, enjoy tea and mandazi, and come home in the evening to either collect his measly pay or to drop the car and go home. Money will also take care of communication. Your team needs credit. If something is happening on the ground 
and your team member has seen something that you can take advantage of, they need to be able to call you. If they send you a please call me, you'll never see that message in good time. So they need to be well furnished. They should have the credit. They should have the gadgets, be it phones, be it internet, so that communication in your team is seamless and there is no delay. Money will also help you market yourself in ways that you personally cannot do on your own. Can you imagine going to visit every single resident in your jurisdiction one by one, telling them, I'm so-and-so, I need your vote. I'm so-and-so, I need your vote. It's almost impossible. But with good money, you can put out posters. In every single corner, you can have your images. When people get off the matatu, they see you on the stage. There's a banner, there's a poster, there's branded vehicles. You also give out t-shirts. This is one from my campaign. We were actually handing this out. So you see, you hand out the shirts with your writings, your name and everything. And you also include your image at the front. If you hand out even just one shirt to one person and they wear it for, let's say, three weeks thereabout, so many people will have seen you without you having to go around. So that is another thing that money does. It helps you with branding and marketing. Although that is an entire segment on its own, I will tackle it in a different video. Money will also help you raise bail money. I know many of us want to think that life is rosy and everyone is good, but that is not the case. You might be coming up against opponents who are very wicked. Some of them will frame your own people just to demoralize your team. They'll frame them on flimsy cases and they are picked up by police. And you will need to be able to get these people out because the more they are inside, the more you are losing out on the outside, especially if they are key campaign members. You can imagine if they pick up your campaign manager or your PA, so the moment they pick up any member of your team on fictitious issues and other lies, and you're told to pay 100,000 to get them out, you need to be able to put together that money and get your team member out. It also helps build moral support of the other team members so that they now know, no matter what happens to us, our boss will take care of it. So let's just work, let's forget anything else. Money will also help you to make money. One way to raise money for a campaign is through fundraising. And there's no fundraising that you can do without money. The donors will feel very much disrespected. You can imagine being called to a fundraising event where you donate 20, 30, 50,000 and you're not offered tea. There's no biscuits. It's just a meeting under a tree and people donate money. You can get away with that in some areas, but in most cases, it is going to lead to you collecting even less money than you anticipated. But with money, you can ensure there's some food for the donors. You can ensure there is a nice venue. You even saw the other one for Ela Odinga whereby they were selling a plate, a plate of food for a million shillings. I think if you ordered cuckoo and something, it was a million. If you ordered this and that, it was half a million. It was a fundraiser. As much as you're giving money, you're also getting a nice experience as part of the process. You as the donor, you live there feeling good. You feel like you've backed the right candidate. In that particular event, you'll also need to have speakers. You'll need to have a nice speech for the donors so that they know where their money is going they know that they are backing the right horse. So without money, you cannot make money. Even merchandise, you can sell merchandise at that particular event. The cups with your name and the brand can be sold for three, 4,000, perhaps even more depending on the clientele you're having coming in. You can sell t-shirts, armbands, banners for the vehicles. So that is another reason why you'll need money to make money. So the most important thing for you as a first-time politician or as someone who wants to become a politician rather is to focus on your money don't even worry about networking and doing other things you need to focus on your money that is the greatest part and that is where it all starts look at people like didi nyoro didi nyoro young as he is he is the biggest shareholder in kenya at the kenya power enlightening company do you think didi nyoro will have a problem contesting for president in future the man has millions, if not billions, and the good thing of being in that caliber is you have other friends who are on your level. You go to play golf at the same areas, so you get to mingle with other wealthy people. So when the time for it comes and Didi Nyoro decides to campaign for president, just putting together 15, 20 friends, he'll be able to raise a billion. And I don't mean that you need that much money for you to become a politician, no. Chances are you're starting out small. You're starting out with MCA, you're starting out with MP, and you'll be even more fortunate if you're vying for MP in the upcountry areas. It's slightly cheaper there than it is in the city. Because in the city, everyone you meet wants a handout. And the handouts given in the city are four or five times more than you'd give out in the upcountry areas. So you need to understand the geography and what's going on. 
So the moral of the story is that a politician who spends his time or her time building up wealth can out-campaign and out-maneuver any other politician on the ballot box. But another politician who is building networks one by one, one by one, but does not have any money, he will have a very hard time. I'll give you one story without mentioning the names of these members of parliament. Now, somewhere in Western Kenya, there was a race for MP. And uh, this particular area, it's a stronghold of Ford Kenya. So these guys campaigned and campaigned, and there was an ODM candidate. A candidate who never showed up for any campaigns, never even came to shake people's hands. He only showed up in the last two weeks. The campaigns have been going on. I'm talking about 2017, not 2022. He showed up in the last two weeks with a helicopter. He went to this ground. A helicopter has never been seen there before. He landed there. Everyone rushed to come see the helicopter. He gave them handouts, 500 each. The other guys were giving out 150. He gave them 500. So the people left there saying, who is this fellow? So they sang his name and he became popular. He left there, went to another area, three different regions, and he won that election. A two-week campaign with excessive money, he defeated everyone else. So that is the importance of money in your campaign. Now in the next segment, I'm going to tell you about a fellow called a campaign manager and how crucial they are to your own campaign. You can be very clueless, you can be a first-timer, you can know nothing about politics, but with a campaign manager, you can somehow defeat everyone else. This is someone who has all the know-how, where you need to be on Monday, where you need to be on Tuesday. He'll have the schedule for you. Even if there is a funeral, he's someone who is very sharp. He'll pick up, there's someone who died in a certain home. That person has a lot of influence. Let's go there, let's donate, let's give a speech. They plan everything out. Those are the unsung heroes in every campaign. Every member of parliament sitting in the National Assembly today, every senator in the Senate, even the president today, they all had campaign managers who did wonders behind the scenes. So you too will need a very competent campaign manager. But I'll tell you more about that in the next segment of this series. I'll not be doing it daily, but I intend to complete this series before the end of January. And I have promised that it will stay online. I will not bring it down and no one will charge you for anything. And if anyone downloads and tries to sell it some, somewhere else, just uh, notify me through my email or even in the comment section. I actually read every comment. There is no comment that passes by me. It's just, that there, it's just that there are times I can't comment on all of them, but I do skim through and I'll see everyone. Well, that's it from me for now. Do drop me your own comment in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read it and to give you a response. Now, in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. All right, guys. Adios.